In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can easily make this Notion template, which has saved me hundreds of hours and has helped me keep my college life organized in under 15 minutes. Starting off, you're going to need to create a new Notion account. Notion is a free platform to use, but they do have paid premium options for bigger teams and if you want to use their Notion AI feature. For most college students, I'd recommend just sticking with the free option. You can always upgrade later if you need. Also, this video is not sponsored by Notion. Once you're inside Notion, this is what the preset starter home page will look like. Let's begin by deleting the Notion preset pages to keep our workspace clean. You can do that through the sidebar on the left. Okay, once you've deleted those pages, let's create our own new page. You can do this by clicking on the add a page button on the left hand side. Next, let's rename the heading of this page to school dashboard. Then, you'll want to click on the body of the page and enter slash database. You'll want to click on the one that says full page. Now let's rename this to due dates and exams. Okay, great. So this page I'm making right now will help you to organize your school assignments and projects and exams. So let's make this a little more useful for us. I'm going to change this tags column to something that I like more or will be more useful. Um, I'm going to call it class. So here, if you click edit property and under options, you can type in all of the classes you have. Okay, next we're going to make a new column and this will be for the due dates. So all you have to do to create a new property is click plus and then click date. Let's rename this to due date. Perfect. And since this is the most important thing for me, I'm gonna drag this all the way to the left. The next category I wanna make is under, again, click plus, then click multi-select, and this will be type. So this category is what I use to categorize the different things I have to do for school. So stuff like assignments, projects, exams. I make little tags for each assignment. Sometimes the assignment will be called something and it's not really clear what I'm supposed to do. If I know, oh, this is a discussion post, then I know kind of how to budget my time once I start to calendar block. For me, my main categories are assignments, discussions, quizzes, exams, and projects. And I did forget to mention that you can change the color of these tags simply by clicking on it and you can change the color. So I want to make that one blue. Now we just have to make one more column that I find useful and you can do that by clicking plus and click text. We're going to call this description. So the description column is a way for me to be able to write quick notes and still be able to see it within a quick glance. Okay, so now that we have our categories, the next thing I'm going to do is start adding my assignments. So you can do this by clicking on new and the header will be the name of your assignment. So I will just use this one. And for the class, it was for my, we'll say English class. And you can also rearrange the order of the little categories you make. So I personally like to have class at the top and then due date and then type and then description. But again, do what works best for you. So the due date, let's make this for the six and then let's make this a discussion post. Great. So that's one assignment done. I'm going to skip ahead and add in all the rest of my assignments. Feel free to pause here as well if you are following along to put your assignments in as well. Okay, I have finished adding my assignments to my database. And as you can see, they are, they are fictional. There is no flop tropica case study, but I am using these as an example because these are the first things that pop into my head. So we're gonna roll with it. Let's make this a little bit more useful for us. So what matters to me most is what is actually due. So you can sort the due date by clicking on due date and then click sort ascending. Now we'll be able to see that the vision of the future discussion post 
is due first. If I were to plan out my calendar, the first thing I'd want to work on is that assignment. After you've done all of this work, we can take this one step even further by creating different views for the database we make. Like personally, my favorite way to view the assignments is through a calendar. So what you want to do is you want to cl click the plus button up there and under new view, click calendar. We're going to call this just the calendar view and click done. Now you will be able to see your assignments down here. And I think I have a couple down here as well. Honestly, that's not very helpful for me right now. Like I just see the name, but it's not giving me all the information I want to see quickly. So what you want to do is you want to click on these three dots and then under properties, you want to click on the eyeballs and I like to deselect the class and type. That's what matters to me most because due date is already on the calendar. Doesn't really matter. And now when you take a look at it, now I can see, okay, June 6th, I have the English 101 discussion due and then June 8th and so on and so forth. And then you can take this one more step even further by clicking on the plus button again and click calendar again. But this time we're going to show calendar as week. Now you click done. And then under properties again, we're going to deselect type and class. Now you can't really see anything here, but if you click on the next week, which you can go last week is that button and then next week is that button. You can see that now we have a weekly view here. Let me rename this actually. You can rename things also by clicking on the actual view, click rename. We're going to call this week view and then we can call this the month view. And we can also rename this to list view. I want to put week view at the top and then we'll do month view then list view. Perfect. Now you have a fully functional calendar that shows you exactly when things are due and you have multiple ways of seeing it. We are going to go back to our school dashboard. There's two ways to go back. You can either click on the sidebar on the left or you can also click on the top bar up there. So this also shows you exactly what page we're at right now. So we can go back to our school dashboard and let's make a new page. We're going to call this our notes. So we're going to make a new page. We're going to call this notes and it is currently my summer semester. So I can, I'm going to call it summer 2024, but you can change this to whatever works for you. Now I'm going to make sub pages for each of my classes. So all you have to do is click slash page and you can rename this into the different classes you have. So I believe I had English 101 and then to go back again, I'm going to use a top bar. Cool. Now we have the different pages for each of our notes. Some people use databases instead. Um, that works too, but personally, I find it a little bit messy. I like to just have specific pages for each class just to make it easier for myself. For how I take notes within each page, I like to use toggles. So the command for that is slash toggle. It's the one that says toggle list. So what this does is it creates a toggle for you to be able to group each lecture or each lesson plan into different toggles. So I'm going to show you right now. So normally I like to start with what week it is. So like I can say this is week one and today is May 30th, 2024. And we are learning about sustainable buildings. We'll say that. So now I know exactly what week it is and what day the lecture was and what the general topic was about. And now if you click that little toggle button, I like to use slash bullet points to write my notes. And also I do like that Notion gives you a lot of options for how you want to format each note. So you can make things bold, you can make them italic, you can make them um, underlined, you can highlight. And to do that, all you have to do is to select the text and then you can make it bold, you can make it italic, you can underline. Um, they also have shortcuts. So like for MacBook users, it's um, command I for italic, command B for bold. Once you familiarize yourself with those shortcuts, it makes note taking a lot easier. Um, for highlight, there's so many different colors. So all you have to do is you click on the text, click the three dots um, under color. You can change the color of the text or you can also just create a background or a highlight. You can also indent by clicking on shift tab. Um, that way you can kind of make little family groups like this can be point B and etc. etc. And so really like Notion lets you use so many different customization options for you to be able to create notes that work best for you because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how pretty your notes are if they're not helping you get the grades you want 
then you gotta change things up. That is pretty much the note taking section. But now is the important part that I'm sure a lot of you have come here for, and it's the decorating. There are quite a lot of resources that you can use and that Notion lets you um, customize with. So for example, if you click on the three dots, um, I like to use the full width. It just looks better in my opinion. You can also change the font that is used. The font changes only works for pages, I believe. I tried to change the fonts for the databases, so like our calendars and stuff, but it doesn't let me do that. Within your school dashboard, you can also add covers. So covers are pretty much like the YouTube banners you can make. You can make sub banners for each page as well on Notion. If you click on change cover, you can see that Notion has a lot of preset photos. Like some of them are really pretty. You can always also upload specific photos or you can paste links. As you can see, the banner is changed. So there's so many things you can do with that. You can also add icons. You can use emojis or Notion has pre-built icons as well. I do like using the website Icons8. Again, I'm not sponsored by Notion or anyone in this video. I, these are things that I genuinely find very helpful. So for example, I wanted to find a school icon for our school dashboard. Like, I don't know, this one's kind of cool. You can click copy, link to PNG, and you can go back. And under custom, you can paste that link. And now you have a custom icon, which is pretty cool. What I also like to do, for example, if you've watched my spring reset vlog, is I like to go into each notes page and theme it. So for example, for history, I can add a cover. You can reposition it as well. Sometimes I find it a little bit wonky. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We'll just keep it like that. You can customize your notion as much as you want or as little as you want. I'm gonna go ahead and customize it now. I'll make a time lapse of it so that it's kind of cool. Another website that I like to use for decorating the Notion is indify.co. So indify makes widgets for Notion. So there's different things like the weather, a life progress bar, quotes, stuff like that, that I find is pretty cool. My favorite is the clock. So let's just, I'll show you how to make one right now. Just click on the clock. I like the analog smooth and let's get rid of the show seconds text. Perfect, so now we just have the time and the date. And for the dark light appearance, I like to use use system settings so that if my computer changes to dark mode, then the widget will change with it. Okay, and then all you have to do is click copy. And then in Notion, you wanna click on slash embed and then paste that link into the Notion. And now you have it. It's kind of ugly there. So we're gonna click on the little line and box and then you wanna put it to the left. And one cool thing about Notion too is that these elements, if you see the, the six dots, I don't know what to call them, but the six dots, you can take that and you can drag the elements around. And once you see where the blue line is, that means that's where you are moving it to. So if, for example, if I move this down here, it moves it underneath notes. But if I move it, say, beside clock, then now it's beside the clock. So what I like to do actually for this page is I can put it on top of that. And then there's a little gray bar that we can resize this with, kind of like that. I wanna make a horizontal break line to make it a little bit neater. To do that, all you have to do is click on the three dashes and then Notion will automatically make that for you. That is pretty much the extent of how much I'm gonna decorate this Notion template. Again, with Notion, you can go as far or as little as you want. That concludes my easy peasy lemon squeezy Notion tutorial. I do hope that you were able to find this helpful and that this starts your Notion journey. Notion has helped me so much in my uni life 
and I think everyone can benefit from using it. Big shout out to Liam for requesting this video. And again, if there's anything you want me to cover or if there's anything you want me to talk about, please let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.